Like anytime I, I like meet someone and I walk in the room and I'm a 6'3 black guy and they're like, basketball, right? Like <laughs> that's usually what they assume. When I go back to the studio tomorrow, there's gonna be a bunch of boxes waiting for me and I'm just pumped to open them. Like it's Christmas every time. If I had only used one phone that, I would use the OnePlus 7 Pro. Off, 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 off. The pill! Clapping claps. Welcome back to another episode of Off The Pill Podcast. Today, we have David in the moderator seat. Paco's next to me. I'm Ryan and another very special guest, Mr. Marcus Brownlee in the house, everybody. Oh, wow. Beautiful. <laughs> That's all you get. That's I mean, my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> it just, yeah. <laughs> it just, after that, we don't really use that. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, probably tech YouTuber. Yeah. In fact, you are the biggest tech YouTuber for sure. There's a bunch of other channels that also do tech. But you've been around a long time. But I've been doing just tech. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, you're in town, so thank you again, because you're normally in New York, right? Yeah, New Jersey. Uh huh. East then, Coast. Okay. And then you're here for, I don't know if you want to bring it up. I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would like, you I'd you're like just, to you're rant. venting a little bit. <laughs> Tell us why you're here, dude. So I came out here. Uh, we're in LA for, there is a Motorola event where they, they announced, you know, you've probably had the Razer, one of the most popular phones ever. Yep. They made a folding screen version of it. And so it was, they were having this announcement event. It was cool. We got to see it in person. It was revealed. Mm -hmm. But the event itself was pretty bad. Um, and I've been kind of like roasting them on <laughs> in my video <laughs> and like in, in other places. But it's uh, it's happened. Mm -hmm. It's it's out there now. It's uh, it's out there that Motorola doesn't know how to throw events. I, you can tell it's been a while. Oh, okay. It's, it's definitely <laughs> I mean, been a while. It has been a while a for them. One. Yeah. yeah. What was but the last the, phone they even had? Well, they have a lot of mid-range phones. Like their Moto G is one of the most popular like $350 phones. And so they don't really have to do a big showy fancy event for it. They just put it out and suddenly it's the most well-selling phone on Amazon because people love cheap phones. Really? Oh. But, uh, you know, a big 900, this is a $1,500 phone. They got to do some some showy stuff. They tried to put on an event. Diplo was there. But it, it wasn't that great. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Was the music good? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry. Diplo. <laughs> Sorry, Diplo. Sorry, Diplo. But in general, I mean, like the, you said you like the phone though. Yeah, I mean, it was, f so I didn't even use a razor, but, like, I could tell, like, just from mm -hmm. holding it, like, wow, this is kind of cool. Like, it the whole cool. folding screen thing yeah. is still pretty sweet. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's worth a $1,500. Oh, my gosh. I think you have to really love that nostalgia that they're sort of wrapping it in, and right. I think a lot of people will try to mm -hmm. get it for that reason, but. Yeah, I mean, I saw a meme of it. I thought it was fake, but that, I mean, it does look cool. I mean, yeah. that, I, I don't know. Functionality-wise, I don't know, but. And that's kind of a, a thing that uh, <laughs> other companies are pushing, right? The foldable screen stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Samsung has one. Huawei has one. Um, this company, Royal, made one. There's like a couple floating out there. But they're mm -hmm. all over $2,000. So Jeez. on one hand, this is one of the cheaper folding screen phones. Mm -hmm. But it's still like an iPhone is, you know, 1000 thousand, eleven hundred 1100 bucks, And most people are just just getting a new iPhone, right? Yeah. So you got to you gotta have a real reason to spend that much. So. Right. They're trying. So you're constantly going to these different events and releases and stuff because, I mean, that's what you do. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure people invite you and bring you out because it benefits them. The thing I appreciate is that you're pretty honest with your reviews. Like, it's not always positive. And, and yeah. I'm sure they're bringing you out or even paying you. Um, how do you manage that? If, some, if someone's bringing you out, and even if, I don't know, maybe they don't, but I'm sure there must be, like, some kind of compensation, right, since you're giving right. them free promo. There has never been. Ever. <laughs> so I've done, so I've, yeah, I fly to events. I mm -hmm. go, I pay for the flight and the hotel. Really? And I go out there. They wow. always invite me and it'll be up to me to decide, is it worth going? Like, is this one of those things that people are interested in? Should I go see it or not? Um, the Motorola one, I was like, yeah, people will care about this mm -hmm. folding phone. Like it's that's cool. one of the more interesting yeah. things this year. Um, but yeah, a lot of times there's events that are just sort of more casual or, and I'll just not go or they'll invite me and I, I have to decide if it's worth it. But in general, I just know that valuing my honesty yeah. of like, is it actually like, that's the reason I'm there is to give you my mm -hmm. impressions. What I really think is the product worth the money that they're, they're announcing they're going to charge for it. That's what I'm there to show. Right. So if I'm not honest, then none of that's worth it for anyone. Right, so, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, so how long exactly have you been doing it? 2009 was the first video. So almost 11 years, 11 years. Wow. Do you still, I mean, it seems like you enjoy it, but 
Yeah. At some point, I mean, I, I'm sure it's exciting because you, you're really into it, but at some point, is there ever a time where you're just like, man, I just want to try other stuff? Kind of yes, but also uh, so much of what I'm into is trying to make the videos as good as possible. Uh -huh. And the more you do in this, I'm sure you know, like in this world of like trying to make videos unique and, and better, the more you find that you can also try to do. Mm -hmm. And so we're in this like crazy world of like, we, we got this camera robot that's specifically made for moving a camera. It's, you'd see a robot in like a factory that would like move parts around. Mm -hmm. uh, and a company has like written software to control it and keyframe it. And so now we're attaching the camera to it and like having the robot do crazy camera moves. Mm. We're at this point now where like, that's the type of fun that we have making a video. <laughs> right. Well, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> where, exactly. Where like, if I was just doing the same type of video yeah. I did eight years ago, I'd probably be really bored, but that's yeah. the type of right. stuff. So just, just advancing your craft yeah. essentially. Exactly. And it just so happens to be something you're still interested in. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, there's always going to be new tech. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. part of why my job is easy. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be interesting and exciting. And I mean, I, I guess I have to, you know, you just be, have to be you. I have I mean, to be a little more than my normal self, but right. like the tech has to be interesting. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I don't have to work as hard as the engineers trying to get everyone's attention. <laughs> right, ha right. Have right. you always been into tech? Like what, what got you started in, in, in all that? Yeah. I feel like I have pretty much always been into tech, somewhat of a nerd. Uh, my dad was in it. Mm. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but you know, finding, you know, a computer when I was in high school and buying my first iPod touch and being like, this is amazing. I want to unbox it in front of a camera. Like, that's probably a pretty nerdy thing to do. So I feel like I've always been into tech in some way. I also read that you majored in business and information technology. That yeah. that must also play into like what you know your your passions, right? Yeah, yeah. I and I went to a tech school, so that's like almost everyone there was technical in some way. Um, I've you know I always had the my best score all nine times I took the SAT it was always the math section. Wow. So I feel like I've always yeah had a, sort of a technical inclination. Um, but then it's just exciting. Like new gadgets are just fun. So it sounds like you were made for this. Like you, you're, you're, you're with your dad being in IT. Do you sure. do you talk to him a lot about like different gadgets that come out? And was that was that always like a part of your life growing up? Uh, yeah. And his job is like about like solutions in a way. So software solutions, like custom, you know, infrastructure type stuff. So it's not even like the gadgets. He's like more like behind the scenes. But even that, like now, that's like what we talk about is like, did you see this new phone? Are you, are you trying out the Chromebooks right now? What's your deal? So like, yeah, that's just sort of always been part of what we talk about. Mm. Yeah. And how old are you? 25. 25. Yeah. And um, you've been doing like interested in tech stuff for a long time since like a, a young age then. Yeah. And was it um, ever an issue where you were growing up uh, like that people because you know a lot of people are like oh black people should be athletic which you are because sure. you play on a professional frisbee team mm -hmm. and um currently yeah oh i <laughs> yeah. didn't know that since yeah. 2015 wow. uh, a professional 13. team 13 yeah. 13 oh okay. pro wow. team yeah wow. it's a pretty new world ultimate of, frisbee? Uh, ulti of, of pro ultimate ultimate frisbee is like 50 years old but yeah pro ultimate is pretty new I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> but does that mean you get paid to play the game? Somewhat. It's pro, right? Yeah. It's almost nobody's full-time job. Yeah. Everyone who plays professional Ultimate Frisbee pretty much always also has, they're a doctor, a teacher, or whatever. Uh-huh. But yeah, when we go out and we play in front of a stand full of fans and there's referees <laughs> and it's like, crazy. It, it feels like a pro thing. That's like the craziest part. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, yeah. yeah so yeah. like what I was saying is like, you're not only smart, you do have the athletic side. So, mm -hmm. but did you ever have to deal with, uh, people teasing you because it's like, oh, why don't you play like basketball or whatever? But stereotypes? Yeah, stereotypes. Yeah, I don't know if it probably wasn't ever teasing as much as it was just like, it almost seems like an innocent question. Like anytime I, I like meet someone and I walk in the room and I'm a 6'3 black guy and they're like, basketball, right? Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> That's usually what they assume. I actually remember pretty recently, I, I like called an Uber from Newark airport and I like timed it perfectly so that I was walking out the airport as the Uber pulled up. And I like walk out the airport and as I was getting in, some like lady saw that and literally was like, I don't know who you are, but I'm sure you're probably an athlete. So hi. Whoa. Just because like she assumed that that's like, <laughs> like something a, like an, like a Giants player a would random, do. Yeah. Just a random yeah. person. Whoa. Do you take like, offense to those things though? I don't take offense well, to Well, she's it. also not wrong. She hasn't, <laughs> she's not <laughs> you're wrong. You're an athlete, dude. You're but, a pro athlete. Yeah. It's like, it's almost like the, the implication is yeah. like, that's definitely what you're probably mm -hmm. going to be doing. And I watch basketball. I love basketball, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's, I, I get the innocent assumptions, I think. You have a team. Yeah. So kind of. 
I watched the Rockets games, oh. and that's because I was following Chris Paul for like the last like five or six years. Now that he's not, when he got to the Rockets, I started watching them, mm-hmm. and then James Harden started having historic seasons, and now he's on the Thunder, which is way less exciting. So I'm just yeah. a Rockets viewer now. Really? But yeah. you're from New York. New Jersey, right? yeah. New Jersey, okay. But the Knicks, So you don't like the Nets? Oh, wait, I, they were the Nets. I started liking the yeah. New Jersey Nets. They moved to New York. Yep. They're pretty great, but... The Knicks have always sucked. My dad's a Knicks fan. Mm. I apologize every time that he's still a Knicks fan to him. But, uh, yeah, I've never really had, like, an allegiance, like, to a right. city. I just more like, like watching Paul. some players. I I think something about his game. Like, I, I've been a defensive player in Ultimate Frisbee, and Chris Paul's defense specifically, we're mm-hmm. the same height, and I feel like I watch him move, and I'm like, that dude's like a, I think a ninja, basically. I think he's, like, 6'1", yeah. or something like that, but, like, He's an awesome defender, and his IQ is off the charts, and I just like watching smart players Have play. you met him? No. Because you've met a lot of I've met people. some players, <laughs> yeah. I, I have not met Chris Paul, but I have been to a couple of Rockets games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have oh, a team? Okay. I have always been a Spurs fan. Spurs, so that's a good pick. Yeah. Rivals. Kind of. They've ended the Rockets season once or twice. Yeah. yeah. and Well, I think we're, we, we've got a, we have a bigger rivalry with Dallas. To be fair, yeah. from back in the day. Anyway, we're irrelevant now. Um, <laughs> so I think you can make the playoffs this year. We'll see. We'll see, <laughs> man. We'll see. Um, but that's kind of surprising, actually, that you're a Houston fan and yeah. Chris Paul. But speaking of people that you've met, I mean, you just a quick YouTube search, Google search. The people that you've interviewed and talked to is it's kind of amazing. <laughs> and I just thought we'd bring it up. I mean, I Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Kobe Bryant. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Will Smith in the most recent rewind <laughs> just yep. said he's one of the first things he says is your name. Yeah, I mean that's got to be kind of cool. Pretty wild. Uh, yeah, it's always fascinating when I do like an interview or something like that to figure out like every interview. Inter- yeah, every interview has its own like circumstance of like you know someone's on a press tour or they're they're just trying to do their YouTube presence, whatever mm, they're trying to their do promos. Yeah, and it's always fascinating to like try to figure out what that situation is and. Yeah, some of them are just like, they just wanted to be in a video. They just wanted to be on the channel. Neil Mm -hmm. deGrasse Tyson was doing, uh, he was shooting some of his TV show called Star Talk, radio show, mainly a radio show. And they're just like, we got to get you in and do some Star Talk. And your work. Yeah, and I think obviously the audience has part to do with that, but like the tech connection Mm -hmm. and a lot of times they they want to be in this tech world and they don't know exactly how to but obviously they've watched some videos or something that gets them interested Mm -hmm. that's been a way uh to do that elon had no other reason he's just like yeah i'll do it (laughs) wasn't he doesn't have any reason to do a press tour but like yeah he's just like down to do a video so so was it a combination of you reaching out to some folks and then some of them reaching out to you definitely yeah um probably about half and half uh, a lot of people have their teams reach out and it's always like their team's trying to reach out to my team, but my team's just me. So it's just oh, <laughs> me answering their email. Are you, are you not represented by any agent I or do, a manager? I, yeah, I do have an agency and they have worked with, on like a couple of smaller like sponsored projects, but every single one of the interviews has been through me. So yeah, it's just them emailing me oh, like, really? who do we get in touch with? I'm like me. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> cool, yeah, that's awesome. But you have a personal touch on there, I guess. Then that exactly, helps. yeah. And I can talk creative with them pretty much right off the bat. Usually, they're like, "What can we can we do a video?" And I'm like, "Well, here's the talking tech series. You've probably seen this, and we can talk about whatever tech stuff that they're into." So, yeah. Have Have you had good good experiences with with having agents and managers in the past? Being an online you know content creator. Yeah, my experience is pretty limited. I've only had one uh, agency that I've worked with. And so technically one agent slash manager, but other than that, it's pretty, I don't even do that much like sponsored stuff or any crazy extracurricular, like outside of the video stuff. So I haven't really had too notable of an experience. Does that mean that the gear that you receive to, to review, are they, are they just sending it to you or is it, uh, you know, are you buying them? A little bit of both. Mo- really? I, I wow. think it's probably, so it depends on what kind of gear. The, the stuff I'm reviewing, like the smartphones, the, the headphones, the gadgets, that's probably like 80% 
sent to me, 20% bought, but it's going to end up in the video no matter what. If they don't send it, I'll buy it. Mm -hmm. But all the other stuff, people think I also get for free, like the cameras we use and the, the studio lighting and the equipment and the space, like that's obviously all we, I, I pay for it. But uh, yeah, the, the smartphones are, are the main thing that sort of has it down to a science now where they'll like have a release date, they'll send it out to a bunch of press and some YouTubers five days before the release date. Then we all get to use it and review it, and then by the time the release date shows up, then our videos are all ready to go. So I see. Yeah, that that must be an, a, a great feeling to to get something before like the rest of the world does. Yeah. Like, do, do you still find enjoyment in that? Because like, it seems like you get every single phone that ever exists or has ever created. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and you're like, you know, it's like. Do you feel that like Christmas feeling? Like yeah. I get to open a new new thing. It's still kind of a dream job. Yeah. Wow. I it feels like. When I go back to the studio tomorrow, there's going to be a bunch of boxes waiting for me, and I'm just pumped to open them. Like, mm -hmm. it's Christmas every time. Uh, sometimes it's... Because I don't have a public, uh, like, a P.O. box or anything for, like, anyone to send stuff to. So every time a package arrives, I, I like, kind of know what it is. Right. But sometimes it's like, oh, this agency has my address. They've sent me stuff in the past. This is from them, but I don't know what it is. It's probably related to something else. Like, I, I can sort of piece it together, but... It's usually pretty sweet to just open gadgets all yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. What do you do with all the other ones you don't use? All the bad ones. Um, I can either sell them, give them away, give them back. Uh, it would depend on what it is. Or I also just keep a, a lot of old giant storage somewhere. It's not actually that bad because a lot yeah. of gadgets are pretty small, mm. and I'll either throw away the box and then like give away or, or ship back the item. Mm -hmm. But I keep like about two generations old of smartphones from like every single maker. So I just have like a, it's like a drawer literally wow. full of, I have a CD rack and I don't have CDs, but I have like this, <laughs> the, the smartphones all lined up. It's in a there. file. That's it's a cool like the only way. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's so like having shoes, but it's phones. How many, <laughs> how many phones do you have? I can imagine you have a ton. I, the drawer is getting so heavy <laughs> that I'm kind of worried that if I open it all the way, it'll just snap off. Oh. I think there's about a hundred something phones in there, but I don't know. I've never How many uh, phones do you use, though, currently? Two. Two. I always have my main Android phone and my iPhone. And my main phone is my main SIM card. I have two SIM cards, too, uh, which is kind of annoying. But my main number and then, like, my iPhone number. And that's what I carry. Yeah. Is Why it, do you say your Android's your main? Because if I put my SIM card in the iPhone, uh, notoriously, iMessage will just start to, like, take over that SIM card's messages. Okay. Uh, and ecosystem lock-in is also very real. And I've been, part of my job is to be, to have a foot in like both ecosystems and constantly be using both. So I, yeah, I'll have like my main phone will be sort of rotating between phones I'm testing, which right now I have the Pixel 4. Before that, it was the OnePlus 7 Pro. I was just testing the Xiaomi Mi Note 10. And there's just a, a long line of phones before that. But my other phone is, has been the iPhone 11 Pro for a couple months. So you're, you're, are you, so would you, if you have to choose between, uh, oh boy, that's what we're trying to get out of you. Yeah. At the moment, let's just say yeah. at the moment, the current time right now, yeah. which one would you choose? If you had to choose, if, if you had to only use one phone, if I had to only use one phone that mm -hmm. I would use the one plus seven pro. Wow. And that's an Android phone that not a lot of people even have heard about. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I love the performance. It has an awesome high refresh rate screen. The camera is not that great. Uh, but a lot of the reasons people use the iPhone are great about that phone too. So I could do without like the iPhone or the pixel if I just had to use one, but luckily I don't have to use one. So mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> Did you at any point, um, love Apple more than Android? <laughs> In some worlds, yes. Uh, not even wait, wait, what does that mean? In some worlds? So, <laughs> yeah, that's a weird answer. Um, not in, this world. In the video editing world, I was a premiere person mm. for like seven years or something. And I finally got convinced to try Final Cut Pro and loved it. So for my computer, I've been a Mac for like four or five straight years. Mm -hmm. and not even close to switching back to a, a Windows desktop. I will probably be on a Mac as long as I use Final Cut. Well, I have to be on a Mac as long as I use wow, Final Cut. Wow, that's so interesting. So many people, including us, we switched from Final Cut to Premiere. Right. What do you like so much better about Final Cut? Okay, so a lot of people switched because you were using Final Cut like probably back in like seven, Pro 8 or 9. I don't know. And it, it went through this like transition where it got like worse. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. like simpler, and a lot of people dropped it right yeah. around then. Mm-hmm. That's when I was on Premiere. So I saw all that dropping it happening, and I was like, ah, I don't really care, whatever. And then it was actually the Kobe interview that I was doing with uh, another YouTuber, John TLD, and he was shooting a behind-the-scenes video. So we were literally, like, next to each other, both editing our videos, me the interview, him the behind-the-scenes. We both finished editing around the same time. I hit export in Premiere. He hit export in Final Cut. His video finished upload, finished exporting. He watched it back, found a mistake, went back, fixed it, finished exporting again, Before uploaded it. I was at like 19%. We went out <laughs> to dinner, came back. It was at like 70%. Wow. It eventually finished. The fans are cranking. I finally get to upload the video. But that was when I was convinced I should at least try Final Cut because mm. this is hilarious. Yeah. I can't edit on my laptop. Uh, you're and on the same laptop, wait, how big same was computer. This video? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the footage. So when you edit like regular ProRes 4K, mm-hmm. it's okay. actually yeah. yeah, it'll it'll handle it pretty well. But I've been editing. This is a multicam red project. So this is three mm-hmm. red raw streams of 6K at the time that I was trying to push through a laptop, and it was just not handling it well. Mm-hmm. Um, I traveled here with an iMac Pro because it's still really hard to edit red raw on a laptop. Uh, I could get away with it if I was just shooting on like my Canon or whatever, but that's been my challenge is mm. raw. Do you feel like it's difficult because you are known for tech? I mean, that's what you're known for. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that pressure of always having to stay at the top of your game quality wise? And I mean, you do have to, people look to you, right? You're the guy. So do you feel that pressure? Like, man, I can't stoop down to a lower quality than someone else. Or like, this is so much more work, but I have to use the red. Yeah, I I don't look at it as pressure as much as I actually want to push the game to the next level. Right. Um, I would love if red made like a smaller camera with like the same color science and autofocus and I could take that places because it would make my life easier. But when I watch back, I've tried this. I've gone to events with like just my RX100 or a, or a EOS R or whatever. And I edit all the footage, and I'm like, uh, I don't like this as much. This isn't as good looking. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so something about my eye for it is like the main reason why mm-hmm. I want to bring like the nice camera and deal right. with the extra work. Yeah, it's because yeah. you genuinely just want to do something better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you have like a team that helps you? Because I know you answer emails yourself, but yeah. wh- what does your team look like? Yes. So I have three people working with me. Uh, Andrew's my full-time assistant and sort of like a second pair of hands, but he also co-hosts the podcast and edits it. And then Vin and Brandon are the sort of cinematography extra hands and they're super talented in their own right, but they'll do, uh, things like they're behind the camera when I'm on camera, they do set design, they do motion graphics, sound design, all that stuff. So when I do like the main edit, I can pass off clips to them. Mm. They can make that clip incredible and we bring it back in and we'll do like a robot shot is what we call it. Bring that back in and we sort of mix it all together and then I'll finish the whole project. So you're still very hands on in your process then. Definitely. Yeah. And I've sort of not struggled with that, but I've thought a lot about like, what if I just gave them the whole edit? And we've, we tried that actually a couple times. And every time we do that, it feels great to not have to work (laughs) as much because they're editing but I feel like the the personal touch the is lost. You, you know have what I mean? to go back in and change. It's going to take a lot of time anyway. Yeah, little things. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, over time, I'm sure we could like hone that down for them to to pretty much edit it exactly the way I would. But it definitely feels like I yeah. should just keep doing the the main edit. And if you're not, I mean, you say you still get excited by it, so it's not like yeah. it's a chore, right? Yeah. No, I I know that the edit is the most tedious part yeah but it is the most personal like execution Mm -hmm. i think i think that's a similar situation you and greg have to go through right yeah yeah we still do that um i've i've had to learn to i guess kind of i was i was a lot worse i mean not i don't know if it's called worse i was very like not perfectionist. I just like things a certain way. I know what you're talking about. Timing to a point something of a second, you yep. know, like it makes a big difference to me. But I had to learn like, okay, I know it bothers me, but I know most people, if not all people, don't even realize this. Yeah. And I've tested that theory. And it, for the most part, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But I had to get okay with being like, okay, this is realistically for the amount of time that we have left to post this, this is enough. Yeah. 
and it was it was it's a tough thing to do and it hurts sometimes yeah <laughs> but i definitely know what you're talking about have you gone back and forth like you edit one and like you can see how the audience reacts versus someone else who edited a video and then, oh for sure yeah for sure and it, it just became a thing of like the times that i really care about something that's exciting and new yeah then i i won't like budge on it yeah if it's something that i'm like not that proud of that sounds bad, but <laughs> it's true. I mean, if, a lot of times I'm not proud of stuff, and then it's just like, well, I, this is enough. You know well, you I mean? know what they say to, to do, like, one for you, one for them. That's, like, a general rule, but, mm -hmm. like, you can mm -hmm. sort of go back and forth where, like, some things are just, you know, we already kind of have a basic idea of what this is going to be, and so we can easily pass that off, and then yeah. some of them are, like, like more passion projects yeah. or whatever yeah. you want to call it, and then you end up. I mean, I recently liked one that you did, a video you made that didn't, I didn't know you did that kind of video. It wasn't a review. It was just you. Um, I, I don't remember what exactly you did. I think you just exported the same video like over and over. I thought that was <laughs> so <laughs> ridiculous. Was I was, like, I, this is the hilarious. kind of stuff I like. This, like that was I funny. Wanna, I want to do more of that. I think you random. should, dude. I, I like that video. How did that do for you, though? It was fine, actually. Yeah. It, did, it did well. I think it's because it ended up like a fun video. Right. Like, I right. think the initial performance of it was probably worse because people are all used to like new gadget, new gadget, yeah. new tech, new yeah. thing. And then... What happens when you download and re-upload a video a thousand times? We're like, well, I don't know. I guess I'll watch that later. But yeah. once people watched it and started sharing it, people like really liked it. I, I the only reason we did that. it, yeah, it was. I fun. thought that was great. Yeah. Um. So you actually did that then? Yeah. <laughs> Uploaded yeah. and downloaded a yeah. thousand times. Yeah. So YouTube has like the download button inside uh -huh. of it. So we uploaded this 8K beautiful like 40 second file, downloaded it, and then uploaded that, mm -hmm. and then downloaded that and uploaded that. And we did that a thousand times. So what was, was so your funny. internet bill like? Because some people have caps. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if you have fiber, unlimited. We, it was, since it was such a short file, it wasn't so bad. It mm -hmm. was more of like the tedious, someone, every, all the comments are like, why didn't you just write a script to do it? Which we were like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> but, know either. <laughs> yeah, uh, it turns out there's a limit of like a hundred uploads a day. And so oh. once you get to that limit, you have to like wait 24 hours to start again. So that's at least 10 days of 100 uploads. Mm -hmm. But then some of them, uh, it was Andrew and Vin and I all trying to do this. But like if you download a video and then upload it and then download that too fast, it was like not done processing. So you didn't mm -hmm. get the full quality. Oh. And then if you like didn't really check them for like 50 and then you like look at it and you're like, why is this 480p? And you go back 50 and you realize you messed up. You, mm -hmm. You That's lose those 50 towards the so cap. Annoying. This is like a month project. Yeah, almost. exactly. Damn. Yeah. Well, worth it. <laughs> Definitely. I thought that was one of the best videos I've seen in a long time. It was good. It was just creative. What, yeah. do, you, what do you use for uh, your camera to shoot with? Or do you change it once in a while? Or Yeah. Our, our main camera is a Monstro 8K VistaVision. Dra oh, their names are pretty weird now, <laughs> but it's a red camera. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a huge, nearly full frame sensor, which is wild for video. And then the image processing pipeline just spits out 8K red raw with like 16 stops of dynamic range or something crazy. I could nerd out about wow. it forever, but it's a, uh, that's the primary camera. Wow. No autofocus, huge file sizes, kind of terrible to use, <laughs> but the image is so nice <laughs> that I'm willing to work with it and, and sort of. That I have that pipeline pretty much down. I mean, for a, a YouTube video, like y you may be using probably the best camera out of any YouTuber, right? Would, would you yeah, say? that's probably. not shooting I mean, film, right? Yeah, there, it's kind of funny. It's like I know another guy, John, who uses uh, an Ari Alexa Mini. Mm. Uh, one of my friends, Judner, who's also from New Jersey, also uses a Red camera, oh. and it's something about the tech crowd. And maybe this is just because we've been leading the way, and a lot of people are sort of copying it, but. For, for whatever reason, we just really like crispy video, and yeah. it, the better you can make it, I, it's kind of funny. You've noticed, like, if you watch a bunch of other tech videos, even from, like, CNET or the Wall Street Journal, yep. suddenly all their videos are really cinematic in the mm -hmm. past couple of years, and that's because that's just the look that's you sort of taken trend. over. Kind of set this bar. I mean, yeah. that's kind of like what you're known for to a certain degree, right? I guess so. I never really thought about taking credit for it because there's sort of right. a group of us that are all sort of pushing the envelope mm -hmm. and doing different things but like if i see a robot shot from one of them yeah i, I started right. that mm -hmm. right yeah <laughs> <laughs> what do you sorry go ahead. yeah do you, uh what you said there's a small group of you guys that do that yeah do you guys have like a, a group chat where you discuss oh do you try to do this this like exchanging no. tricks and trades yeah we not a group chat but we all sort of it's kind of funny at tech events because like tech companies invite all the same people to all their events 
we sort of all collaborate and, and we'll chat at these things. So like CES every year, we're all there. But like when Samsung comes out with a new phone, they invite all of us. So we're all there anyway. Mm-hmm. So we all talk there. And then we're all at the Apple event and we all talk there and the Motorola. And like it just sort of happens a lot during the year. Um, but yeah, that's when we'll end up like just talking about mm-hmm. the tech YouTube world. But do you feel like sometimes because you're always hanging out together, when you guys talk about things, sometimes their opinions influence you? So almost like it bleeds into your commentary? Probably, yeah. And I think even just watching other videos. Mm-hmm. Like I know my my edit style has changed watching other people's videos. Like what you said about like a point second, like yeah. a point one second difference. Like if you watch a Philip DeFranco video, you would know if the edit style changed because like the cadence would be off. Right. And I don't know how many people would notice if my edit was a quarter of a second off, but like that's the sort of thing I'll like sort of hone based on like watching my own and other people's videos. And I think that happens in a lot of things in in tech and other genres too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're about at that halfway mark. Okay, cool. Well, I guess we'll do a quick shishi break. And but, um this is not something we just started doing since yesterday, but do you have any things for our halftime show that you want to perform? Any skills? Anything you can do? Can you sing? Uh, I will drink more of this water and do a bottle flip. Do it Ooh, right, right now. now. But it's going to take a while. Okay. <laughs> just time lapse. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't, actually, you don't actually have to do it. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't even have any cool. crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, then we'll be right back. And we're back. Sweet. Awesome. So I wanted to uh, ask you something about this because, you know, you're you're definitely a tech channel. Um, have you seen how like uh, the YouTube's P score recently got leaked kind of? I did see that. I don't think I saw myself in that, but I saw the articles. About yeah. It. And how it's like definitely pushing tech and gaming and stuff like that. Yeah. Is it explicitly pushing tech? Uh, it, it, def- it talks about that because that's like a great consumer. It's right. something that you can buy a lot of. Right. Um, ad companies will probably purchase into that area as well. Yeah. Uh, and so I was just curious how, if you felt like, oh, like this is good for us or. I feel like I've always sort of known that we're in one of the genres that's like pretty clean for YouTube. Like I know a lot of people like the apocalypse happens, like a lot of certain genres of channels were like yeah. really struggling to deal with it. Um, and if you watch any of my videos or any tech videos, basically, they're all pretty much like clean. The the normal demographic is awesome for YouTube because it's like people who are unreachable anywhere else. It's like 18 to 34 year old affluent spending, you know, <laughs> consumers that are like ready to like, like put our ad dollars right, right. there. Like yeah. it's perfect. So like I've always kind of known that it's a good safe place on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a happy coincidence that I yeah. happen to love tech. But yeah, it's been pretty smooth sailing as far as dealing with youtube so how do you um do you guys have to like look at algorithms constantly is that your thing or are you kind of just like oh no we're clean so we know we're going to be good yeah there's still ways to play with algorithm um especially in the whole quantity over quality game i think about that a lot and we make about a hundred videos a year mm. which is like one every three days like twice a week something like that and i know for a fact because other channels do this if i uploaded daily the channel would do massively better on yep. paper mm-hmm. it would get t- three times as many views every month it would get uh recommended in the algorithm there'd be a bigger category a uh, bigger library of things to recommend um but as, as far as sanity yeah. <laughs> i don't think i can like do that to myself so yeah we think about the algorithm a little bit but generally uh title thumbnail mm-hmm. description mm-hmm. make a great video yeah. yeah, and uh, it just went with uh, terminology. I forgot. For audiences who don't know, like YouTube's P-score is basically like their preferential score, uh, what type of videos they'll suggest you and you're recommended in your sidebar, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and as of a, a couple of days ago, I don't have you seen YouTube's new UI in terms of uploading and stuff like that? Not uploading. I saw the new homepage, mm. which is like much bigger thumbnails, which I don't hate because mm-hmm. I've <laughs> our thumbnails are like, kind of like made to be really tiny mm-hmm. like a, when i do a thumbnail of like a phone like there's only so many angles you can show mm-hmm. a phone where if you shrink it down to that postage stamp size you can even tell what it is so i kind of like the bigger thumbnails but the new upload interface i haven't seen so uh what do you do um when you're not making youtube videos i think a lot of people are pretty interested in knowing what your life is like outside of that do you have like a girlfriend do you uh just 
hang out with your friends like or is it just work 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 and frisbee and frisbee <laughs> yeah ultimate, well ultimate that's what i was gonna say is yeah. like usually if i'm not at work it's some ultimate related thing like weekends for the most part on the east coast when it's warm uh from like march when it's getting warm to like september which is nationals is ultimate frisbee which is it's a lot because you have practice during the week and then you have games and tournaments on weekends, but that's mostly what I'm doing when I'm not at really? work. And that's like mainly the reason I'm, I wouldn't go, I would go insane if I didn't have some right. sort of, especially cause like when you're a YouTuber, I don't, people may not think about this, but you're like sitting down all day mm -hmm. and like, I can't really sit down for more than about three or four hours. Like I hate cross country flights cause I really just don't want to be sitting for mm -hmm. that long. Um, so something about like I can get through sitting and editing for five straight hours because I know you practice tonight out. like will be <laughs> the opposite of this. <laughs> exactly. I'm like chomping at the bit trying to get out of yeah. this. Yeah. So I think that's like the the balance of when I don't have to work. That's that's where I'm at. What is a um? So you said it's like games and tournaments. Is it mostly tournament based your season or how does because I have no no idea. About yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's kind of complex. And anytime I try to explain it i try to simplify it basically club ultimate which is like if you think of like club soccer like area teams are that's like the main version of ultimate college kids will join an area team people who are graduating things like that i played for the new jersey area team now i play for the new york area team uh and is those are all grade? it's a better team mm. yeah uh we came in third at nationals damn and, congrats yeah. thank you that just happened too you said september yeah that oh, wow. was uh, was it a month ago? Maybe it was a month ago now. Out of yeah. how many teams? Because it's Nationals. At Nationals, I think there were 16 teams. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. is it also kind of like uh, other sports where you have to travel to another city to play? Yes. Damn. Yeah. So, so yeah, tournaments will be in various cities around the U.S. So, we had a tournament in Colorado this year. Nationals is in San Diego. Um, there's other tournaments on both coasts generally, but anywhere you get like a huge field space, mm -hmm. that's like mm -hmm. generally like Minnesota and is really popular with, uh, fields and, and certain States have much more fields than others, but it's tournament based. So you'll play like four games in a day mm -hmm. and, uh, hopefully you win. But that's your, like your stress relief and something you love doing. Yeah, definitely. Would you say that, um, I guess let's say ultimate Frisbee became, the thing like it became like the next big thing right well would you leave <laughs> the tech industry and would you do that professionally if it paid off paid way more than you know let's say you got a uh, 20 million dollar contract to be a frisbee player but you got to focus on playing frisbee i can't make tech videos anymore you you could but <laughs> people be like only come on, on dude like All yeah right. come, like it do it on like, your free time but like weekends yeah it'd be like lebron vlogging yeah. you'd be like dude yeah. what are you doing yeah your new hate comments would be like dog get back to the fields <laughs> and throw <laughs> yeah. the frisbee get that disc going dang uh wow I I assume it's your stress <laughs> relief, right? Yes. They don't want compact this. They want frisbee this. Ex now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I never thought about that. I guess. Yeah. I guess I would. Because you would enjoy it more. I would enjoy it, but I think yeah, my off season. <laughs> <I'd> <laughs> yeah. I go back so to good. like you know some mm -hmm. sort of creative outlet because I think I would also go crazy you right now it. if I never had any creative outlet. Mm. So I think they they sort of yin yang each other. Yeah. They keep each other like in check or. Yeah from overwhelming the other. Do you find that your fan base, cause a lot of your stuff is educational. So like if someone's interested in something, I would assume they type in something and they find you and they learn yeah. what they learn and they'd like you or they don't and they trust you or whatever. Do you find that your fans would care, care more about you or care more about your content? I think the content, but I think it helps to have a palatable personality. Yeah. I think there's, um, a bunch of really good examples of channels that are successful because of their personality mm -hmm. and like the audience is there for them. Right. And, Oh, they're so relatable. They're so funny. They're so whatever. Um, and I think I sort of mentioned it earlier, but like the best, the easiest part of my job is like, I don't have to be the most entertaining person personally. Mm -hmm. I'm like covering the tech and that's what people care about. And hopefully my coverage of the tech is also entertaining and that's mm -hmm. where we push the limits of like well, that's why you videos. have fans because they mm -hmm. like you doing it right not just some mm -hmm. random person every time every week or every three days doing it right yeah so yeah there's a million places to get do tech. you don't you think i mean i don't know if you have or not but don't you think what if you did something about you playing professional frisbee you think they would care about you or do you think they would not like that because no, it's I like what is this yeah i think i i have wanted to do that and mm -hmm. i'm i struggle to find the time to really give it 
the time it deserves, I think. Um, Anytime we're playing, I'm so, that's the problem. I'm so (laughs) hyper-focused on playing that I would be like annoyed that I couldn't give my attention to how it was being recorded Mm. and filmed. I'd have to honestly like take a season where I'm injured or something. So I'm not, I'm like not, (laughs) I'm not like, we're like mad that I'm not playing because I couldn't play Mm -hmm. so I could focus on recording. But like usually the entire season, I'm like focused on like peaking physically at the right time of year and like eating right. And like, like everything I'm doing on the field is like for very purpose built. So like, it's really hard to make something about that yeah, without yeah. using other people's footage. So yeah. If, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. I and would, I would like to do that though. And you'd have to like get people to sign like release forms. And exactly. Stuff. But, um, <laughs> on the off season though, yeah. what do you do? That's true. Right now is the off season. Uh, it's a lot of just like working out, boring, staring at a wall, <laughs> biking. Like <laughs> it's, it's not as exciting. Um, we do have like some winter leagues that we can play in in New Jersey, um, which is a lot of like weekday night stuff randomly. Um, but I do enjoy like having random time. I I took a day the other day and I just played two K for like I think the entire day because <laughs> the sun sets at like four o'clock, mm-hmm. and I oh, think yeah. from like from like ten a.m. to like four o'clock, <laughs> I just played two K the whole day because I hadn't gotten two K twenty yet, so I had to like get in the get in the storyline. Yeah, yeah, you so, haven't gotten it yet. Yeah, I usually get 2K every year, like, right when it comes out. Same. And this year, I slacked a little bit, and I didn't get to it until after Nationals. Mm-hmm. And so I just got into it. I got a, I got a question. I'm going to shift modes a little bit, get a little more deep. Sure. Go ahead. Um, what, like, so, you know, you're obviously very, very successful. You've interviewed some of the, the, the leaders of the world, right, in, in technology and um, science, and you've been you know, all over on every publication and, and, and whatnot. And you're, you're, you're doing this thing that you really enjoy, right? Yeah. What, what is, what's driving that? Like, what is the, like, you, do you have like a, a, a purpose or like a, a reason for doing this? Uh, I know it's very deep, um, yeah. but, but I'm curious because, you know, it's obvious that a lot of people are super drawn to your personality, right? Even though it may be something that's, uh, you're just reviewing products, right? Something techno, uh, techno, uh, tech, uh Technology, basically. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, just, uh, I just stuttered there. Um, but, but, you know, uh, it seems like you had a, a really good upbringing and you seem like a very, you know, likable person. And and I'm just wondering, like, what is driving you to, like, what's your end goal? Like, what are, what are you trying to accomplish? Just, I know it's not, sh- you're not, you're not just trying to review products. Like, there's, yeah. there must be something there. I think the, the, the way it all started was I wanted to make videos that I would want to watch. So it sort of it was like created from I wanted to create something that I wanted to exist in the world. And I sort of started to pivot it, but stopped because it was way too much uh, into creating like a website where you could just like look up a product and just like see if you should buy it or not. And it, whether that was a video or like some collection of videos or some information or comparison or whatever it was, you could just find it, decide if you wanted to buy it or not. And I think, like, the videos that I make are, like, kind of the next best thing. It's, like, I think of a product. I wonder if it's any good. I'm just curious about it generally or some topic. I wonder what happens when I upload a thousand times and download it and upload it Mm -hmm. again. And I'll just go search it up, find it, and uh, boom, appears the best possible comprehensive video about what I wanted to see. That's just kind of basically what it's based around, you know. it's I guess it's nothing too deep as far as, like, what is my purpose? What I, what, <laughs> what I want to do with this time? I feel like it's, it's mainly just creating what I want to exist and mm. making it better as we go. It's, it seems like you're on a quest, the way I see it, at least from this explanation. Is, I love it. Uh, I see it as a quest to create the best library of uh, reviews for any particular phone or, 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 you know. Or gadgets, yeah. Yeah, gadgets, yeah. Yeah, yeah it kind of has end up, ended up being that. And I think the, the, like, branching out into other types of videos is the more fun uh, part that I want to do more. And so maybe it, it's less of a catalog of products and more of a catalog of entertainment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but t- tech happens to be the common thread that goes through it. We're doing a retro tech series that starts uh, premiering in December where it's, like, obviously no one's buying these products anymore. They're all going to be you know, 20, 30, 40 year old iconic pieces of tech, but it's like the experience of diving back into what made them iconic. It's just sort of entertainment instead of like product based stuff. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's just a lesson in history. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And still tech related, so people yeah. aren't gonna they'll give you the pass. It's like, oh, it's not your usual stuff, but exactly. it's still related. Yeah, common yeah. thread. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. So uh, we do have some uh, questions from fans here. Um, oh boy, many many questions. Okay. I got a um, question first. Okay. Before yeah. that, I love it <laughs> because you like you said. I like what you said. Palatable personality. Sure. <laughs> what is the weirdest fan interaction you've had though? Weirdest fan interaction. Because I'm sure you're so likable that they just come up and they're like, I know you. I'm going to just dive right. right into it. You're right that like when people come up to me, they, they, it's a, it's a parasocial relationship. Everyone knows everything already about you and yeah. you don't really know them. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of one sided at first. Um, but on one hand that actually does produce a lot of like fun, like interactions. I, on my way here, as I was getting into the Uber, a uh, lady walking by didn't even like do anything. She just walked by and went, I really like your YouTube videos. And then just kept walking. And I was like, Oh, that was nice. I enjoyed that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he created his own sound effect. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the weird, weirdest fan interactions. Uh, I'm trying to think of like, cause I'm sure you have to be at a lot of conventions, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about the tech audience is a lot of nerds like me, don't go out too much or, or you know, whatever. So like when we get to like a tech convention, imagine filling a, a hall with all these people mm-hmm. who like are used to being like just on the computer and now they're just sort of checking out tech. So it's sort of a, like everyone that comes up to me will have like a different way of trying to explain that they know who I am, but it's usually pretty awkward. It'll be mm. either like, Oh, my daughter knows who you are. Uh, YouTube, right? Or they'll like say <laughs> pretend they don't know. You. I like I like the uh, everyone says the in, the acronym wrong. I was walking through the airport and someone said MKBD or something like they just said the wrong letters and I was like, yeah, that's me, not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone's got a different way. I noticed of like just saying yeah, so nothing you. too crazy. Then. Nothing, yeah, nothing like no crazy. I don't want to like jinx it, but nothing like stalkerish or any wild Maybe stuff. It's because like your that. audience is a little more mature. Yeah, yeah, they're all at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and nerdy. Smart, he said. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Um, all right, so we have a question here uh, from three Nipper three. Do you ever want to produce or create your own tech? Yeah, that's a big challenge, like a big undertaking. I've mm-hmm. thought about, and this has come up before. Like, why don't you make? You have so much to say about phones. Why don't you make your own phone? It's like, well. Okay, That's, <laughs> you need you need like a, a manufacturing process. You need to basically partner with an entire smartphone yep. company. The thing about partnering with a smartphone company when you have to objectively review smartphones is that compromises your yep. relationship with at least that company's products forever, if not the rest of those products. So uh, it seems like that might be like an end game. Like when I'm 50, I'll be like, all right, yeah. I'm done making videos. I'm going to make the perfect phone and I'm out of here. <laughs> or when you're a professional <laughs> ultimate player. Yep. Yeah. And, when it that blows up. and you're sponsored. Yeah. By yeah. your own phone. Exactly. Yeah. And then the logo's on the jersey. And it's, <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. Um, what, what, this is actually my, my, my question. Um, I, you know, everybody knows that you, you are a fan of Tesla. Yeah. Right? Uh, you drive a Tesla, mm-hmm. right? Uh, what, what do you think about the future of Tesla and, and what their automobile, like where they're headed right now? Like, do you think they're headed in the right direction? Yeah, they, whenever I look at Tesla and I compare it to, I try to stay objective. Like, yeah. I'm obviously a fan of Tesla, but I'll look around at other electric cars. And every time I look around, Tesla is miles ahead in so many ways as far as electric cars. Um, and I think we're just now getting to the point where there is legitimate competition to a couple of their models. Mm. The Porsche Taycan seems like one of them, uh, but it's still more of a driver's car versus the everyday. Like, the Model 3, when you're out here, it's everywhere, basically. Um so they're kind of on a great path. I I was talking to someone recently about a potentially unique way for them to exist, which is just for them to sell parts. Like they have the Gigafactory and they have such great drivetrain technology. They could sell electric drivetrains, sell batteries, and then kind of like Google, just sell one car, like a Model S and a Model 3, but sell the rest of those parts to make everyone else's electric cars better, the way Google licenses Android. Mm-hmm. So there's an Android phone from Samsung, from Motorola, from Huawei, from Xiaomi. They can all use that to make their phone better so they don't have to build their own OS. Because right now, Ford doesn't really make great electric drivetrain. Toyota doesn't, I mean, they have a hybrid, but they don't make their own great electric drivetrain. So if they just partnered up with Tesla 
and use the supercharger mm-hmm. network, they'd already have a much better car. So I was thinking about it in that unique way recently, and I think that could be pretty cool. But mm-hmm. as of right now, I just want the Roadster. Nice. Oh, yeah. When does that come <laughs> out? Did that come out already? It's supposed to be 2020, but oh, it's okay. for sure delayed. Oh. Yeah. All right. Next question here um, from Joseph Liu. What does mobile tech look like in the future? Oh, man. If I knew, uh, if I told <laughs> yeah, you, I'd have to kill to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think also I struggle with being maybe a little bit short-sighted because people make these like crazy renders of like, oh, it'll be a hologram that comes up out mm. of your... I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I just think, like, we'll always have, like, I see smartphones as just, like, this object that you, like, pick up, mm. use, and put away. Mm-hmm. And so when, when we get these, like, wearables and, like, I just broke out Google Glass again for, like, the first time in years and I'm, like, trying to understand, like, maybe VR is the future, maybe AR, but I don't quite see it. Yeah. And I just, I go back to, like, well, if we can make phones better, that'll be the future. Yeah. So uh, maybe I'm short-sighted, but I feel like I just look at smartphones. Like Ph- phones thing. aren't going away. Not anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I got a question, actually. Uh, so, yeah, Rewind, we talked a little, like, very briefly about it, but Iconic. I want to touch on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I feel like you kind of got thrown into it yeah. hard because you were, like, that first big line. Sure, yeah. Did you, do you feel, the brunt of the hate. Yeah. You were almost like the face of it, that's why. Yeah, I don't know if I. He was you know, it was funny. Well, not the face, face, but he, he was one of the biggest people yeah, yeah. Yeah. in it. I, I don't think I got that much hate for it. I think the memes and the comments were relentless for like three months. Mm-hmm. But as far as um, my involvement in it, like I kind of told my story and I made a video about it. But like we all thought Rewind was going to be this different thing this year. I don't know if you got like that email that was like, this is the first year Rewind's going to feature creator voices. And we've narrowed it down to... 50 creators instead of 350 and i was like oh this is this is going to be different and then we did this shoot and in the shoot the producers are all telling us the same stuff like it's going to be great we we did multiple takes of different lines everyone gets a close-up shot we're like wow this is different and then you watch the video and you're like this is not different this is the same (laughs) thing uh so yeah it was like uh i don't feel like i got thrown into it as much as i just uh i along with everyone else involved didn't have any control over the final product and it just kind of happened. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully this year is better. <laughs> if it, if it even yeah. do a rewind this I'm year. I'm sure they will. Mm-hmm. I think they're doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's another question here um, from Hot Shore Hark. Uh <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, your reviews are now quoted by the biggest companies in the world. Has that kind of pressure changed how you approach reviews in any way? And it's, it's, I mean, I would think that, you know, uh, when you're making these reviews, some of the biggest publications may also quote you, right? Sure. So, I mean, do you feel that pressure or is it just, just don't think about that at all? Uh, at most, I think maybe it might like make, might tempt me to use more quotable language. Mm. But as far as like how I actually talk about the product, I, I don't think it changes anything at all. I think even since like the the beginning days, eight, nine years ago, I got to tell like it is like if a product's bad, I'm going to tell you exactly why it's bad. But the good thing about that is a company who makes that product, when you put out a review and say something's bad, like if, uh, let's say the battery life for the camera, whatever, it's bad. The fact that I'm telling the truth about it helps them to either improve it, they can do a software update or to make a better one the next time. Mm-hmm. And if no one told them it was bad, they kind of wouldn't know like they put out a product the best they can and hope for the best and turns out the battery's bad no one wants it good to know make the the next one bigger battery but if they don't get this useful valuable feedback about why something's bad uh it won't help the consumer uh a good example of that was uh i'll go back to when i was in college i reviewed a motorola phone and I'd worked with them a bunch and uh, the phone came out and I reviewed it and I went through the, the specs and I was talking about the camera about how like this is the worst part of the phone. If they only made the camera better, this would be a great phone. And I showed all these example photos and they reached out and I sent them a bunch of sample images. I was pointing at circling stuff in the videos like here's where the color fringing hurts. Here's where dynamic range would have been better. And there was software update like within weeks wow. specifically addressing what I had mm. asked about. And sure enough, like months later, people are talking about, wow, this, this phone's camera has gotten better. That's mm-hmm. pretty good for them. So the, and I'm sure the next phone had a better camera too. So thanks to you. I think we all win yeah. when <laughs> reviewers do their job. Yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. What, so this is my personal question. Um, what, 
What was the most exciting review that you ever made? Easy. I mean, what was the worst review that you, what you, you, you felt pain to have to make this review. Uh, okay. And then, um, yeah, so I guess those two questions. Okay. Exciting review. I don't know if it even counts as a review, but I got to make of, I've, I've started this autofocus video series pretty recently where we talk about car tech, which lets me oh. review cars. <laughs> wow. All right. All right. <laughs> so smart, we're, smart. We're like five, six episodes in, but I've already, uh, I was given a McLaren 720S for a week oh and nice. like easy. We, we shot it in like December and it was impossibly cold. Like every time we had to lean out a car window to get a shot, it was like the camera mm-hmm. would start to like freeze up and we'd have to take <laughs> it back in. Like it was really hard to shoot, but that was the most exciting product I think I've ever had. Damn, you're upgrading, man. Yeah. Like <laughs> pretty soon they're like, Hey, here's our car, our new car. Yeah. Yeah. Go here's the roadster. <laughs> well, just that's already boxes. it's already yeah. a thing there is already uh there's automotive journalists who mm-hmm. kind of do this already they regularly receive cars to review and right. they'll they have like press cars that like go around the country uh when i did the tesla video that was a press car they don't do it very often but mclaren toyota whoever they have a fleet of cars that they will give to press for a couple of days and get take back mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's already a, a market that you can get into if you want I just had never done car videos and I don't know a lot about cars, but as soon as I got my car, I was like, Oh, I love cars. <laughs> so I kind of started to get into that. But yeah. yeah, that's, that was pretty exciting. Most painful. Yeah. Um, so the one that comes to mind was last year I reviewed the red hydrogen. Mm. And I don't know if you heard about this, what red makes great cameras mm-hmm. and they've been in Hollywood. They have the best color science. I love my red cameras. So, Red, or, or last year, oh, about two years ago, started hyping that they're going to make a smartphone. And I was like, oh, Red's going to make a smartphone. Okay. Okay. It's going to have like the best yeah. camera in any phone, right? This is right around the time when smartphone cameras are getting really good. Mm-hmm. Red's going to get in the game. They're going to change the game. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready for the Red smartphone. Uh, they were taking a while to make it. There was all this hype building up. And you could kind of tell that this was Red not knowing how to make a phone, really. <laughs> like every time I'd ask them for an update yeah. about it, they'd be like, oh, we're... We're doing carrier certification, so we're, it's, we're, it's delayed a little bit, but it's going to be great. Don't worry. I was like, I'm ready. Anytime. I'm ready. Um, and I, I made a video, actually, uh, where they, they gave me a world-exclusive first look at, like, one of their first prototypes, so people got what, what the design would look like. And so I'm, everyone's ready for the phone, super excited for it. It finally comes out. And when it comes out, first of all, the parts are so old because they had been working on it mm-hmm. for two straight years. It had, like, a two-year-old CPU. The camera was an off-the-shelf Sony sensor with really not great photo quality. Didn't do high-quality video, which it's made by Red. Right. <laughs> it, <laughs> of all had, things that should be good. Exactly. Uh, it had a really big battery, but like the it was a thick phone. Like it, it had one of the worst screens of any phone where they were claiming it could do like 3D really well. But if you turn the 3D mode off, the actual display was like not nice. So all these things flopped, fell hard on their faces. And so my review of the phone was like, I wanted this to be good so bad. But mm. it was, it won my, uh, my I do the smartphone awards at the end of every year. It won my worst phone of the year award. <laughs> wow. I get a little toilet bowl trophy. What, what did they say? <laughs> they, uh, they did not ask for their trophy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the other companies asked for them. They did not want theirs. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, I guess that shows... It goes to show you, you're honest, you know? Like, I mean, yeah, you yeah. love the brand, but you had to be honest. So. Exactly. And I then I went on and bought one of their cameras last week. So oh, okay. That's wow. just a... <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Well, that's yeah. pretty much up yeah. to our time. Is there anything we didn't ask? Good? Yeah. Good. Awesome, man. Uh, anything you want to plug right now? Uh, check out my YouTube channel. YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash MKBHD. That's pretty much it. Yep, new yeah. series coming out. Check out his video where he uploads and downloads that video <laughs> 200 times. <laughs> short, lot. short, quick video. Yeah, yeah. I just thought it was funny. Small project. Yeah. I think I definitely think you should do more of those. I will. <laughs> yeah. I will definitely. That was, that was, uh, well, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Um, anyway, you can find us at Off the Pill on Twitter, at Off the Pill Podcast on Instagram. And I guess with that being said, how we end this is we just breathe into the mic. In I'm ready. Three, two, one. We'll have to come to one of your Frisbee games. <laughs> <laughs>